It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us to talk about the Catholic Working Moms Guide to Life is Joanna Wellen. Thanks for being here, Joanna. Thanks for having me. So, this book, talking about working moms, specifically Catholic working moms, what was the hardest thing for you being a working mom? The hardest part for me initially was the isolation, because it felt like I was alone. I didn't know any other Catholic women who were also moms who worked outside the home for a very long time. Hmm. And I just, I felt really alone, really isolated, like nobody could understand what I was going through. Nobody could understand the struggles I faced and so on. And that's uh, a big part of why I decided to start my Facebook group, because I was hoping maybe I could find at least a couple other women who were in the same boat as I was. And then we could, you know, form a little bit of community and and commiserate together. (laughs) And uh, so I started my Facebook group. And as of today, we have over 6,000 members. And what are some of the issues that come up, some of the things that you guys talk about? We talk about, um, like, child care issues is a big thing. You know, finding good child care, what to do if um, your child care gives notice, you know, what types of child care would be best for particular situations, that kind of thing. Um, we talk a lot about practicing our faith in the context of our employment. Um, some people are facing issues like, um, like just this last month with, you know, all the, all the gay pride stuff that was going on. You know, a lot of companies had requirements or requests that people wear like rainbow pins or whatever, um, in order to express solidarity with gay people. And, you know, we had a lot of discussions about as Catholics, can we do this? Should we do this? What's the appropriate response? You know, how do you balance the line between being a good employee and being a good Catholic in that kind of situation and things like that? How is being a Catholic working mom different from being a Catholic working dad, do you think? Uh, I think moms have to carry or by default carry a lot of the mental load that comes with parenting. Um, and, And that's something I think you'll find across the board, not just with with Catholic couples, but moms are typically the ones keeping track of doctor's appointments, you know, grocery shopping, um, you know, who activities, scheduling, and, you know, that kind of thing, and, and keeping that all straight in their head and trying to get everything scheduled and trying to fit everybody's activities into weekends or weeknights. And in my experience, it's not true 100% of the time, but in my experience, dads typically don't carry that much of the mental load. They pretty much, you know, may sit back and let mom take care of all of that. And then he just shows up, the dad just shows up when and where he's told to show up. So it seems like over time, there's been more and more moms choosing or maybe being forced to work to provide finances for their family. And I think we see this, mm-hmm. you know, inside Catholic families and, and outside. Uh, before we talk about some of the struggles of that, what do you think are some of the the pros, some of the the strengths and the positives? Well, there's definitely um, it, it definitely can bring better financial stability mm-hmm. if you have two incomes. Um, there's you know there's a lot of families who maybe could make it on one income alone, but then they would have no retirement savings. Mm-hmm. They'd have no savings at all in case of emergency. Um, they wouldn't have any sort of buffer if one parent loses their job. Um, cause if you only have one person working and that person is laid off or, or fired or whatnot, you don't, you don't have another income to fall back on if that, if the worst happens and, uh, you know, just to help you coast by until they find something new. I think it can help kids too to have that, that role model and see that both parents can contribute to the workplace and that both parents have different gifts that they contribute to the world in different ways. One of the things, you have two chapters back-to-back in the book. One's called Finding Peace When You Don't Want to Work, and the other is Finding Peace When You Do Want to Work. So do you find yourself as a mom who wants to work or doesn't want to work? Well, I'm right now I'm actually not working, Uh um, and not outside the home anyway. But for about 13 years, I was the mom who didn't want to work. 
Mm. And I pretty much, my constant prayer almost every day was, God, please, please help me find some way to stay at home because I really don't like working outside the home. And um, that pretty much was my prayer from the minute my first child was born until I ultimately did become a stay-at-home mom um, about a year ago. And it was really difficult, but I think looking back, I think God put me in that position just so I could do what I'm currently doing, which is running my support group for working moms and, and writing my book. Which, how long did it take for you to put all these thoughts together in a book? Um, I started working on it in the spring of 2018. Hmm. I actually I was laid off from two different jobs within the span of one year. And the same week I was laid off from my most recent job was the same week I submitted the book proposal. And I kind of think that layoff was the answer to my prayer. You know, please show me how I'm going to manage to write a book while working full time. Um, so I found about a month later, the proposal had been accepted. And then so that was April of 2018. And then I submitted the finished manuscript in October of 2018. Hmm. Talking about the Catholic Working Moms Guide to Life with Joanna Walland. And one of the things that I think that comes up a lot is working mom guilt. Can you talk about where this comes from? I think, you know, I think it's not unique to working moms. I think stay-at-home moms have the same guilt, only it's a different focus. Um, I think working moms mm. feel guilt that they're not doing enough with their kids or spending enough time with their kids. Or, you know, sometimes as working moms, we have to miss events at the school, like, you know, um, like a preschool graduation or, or things like that. You know, if, if we can't get the time off or logistically it won't work, we can't go. And that, that can be tough to have to miss those events sometimes. So I think that's part of it. But I've found that as a stay-at-home mom, I still have guilt. It's just, you know, am I spending too much time doing housework and not enough time playing with my kids? Am I not taking my kids enough places during the day because I'm trying to get other stuff done? You know, and that kind of thing. So... I think there's guilt either way. It just it's just different depending on what you're doing. So, do you think being Catholic helps with that guilt, or maybe causes even more feelings of guilt? I think it can help. I, I think that if you know that what you're doing is something that you're being called by God to do, mm-hmm. that can help when during the times when it's really difficult. In my experience, what has been most difficult is other Catholics who try to make claims like the church says you should be staying at home with your family, or the church says you're sinning by working outside the home, or all this thing, all these things the church actually doesn't say, but they see, interpret it that way. And that has been most difficult in my experience is facing that unfair and untrue judgment from other Catholics. Where do you think that comes from? I think a lot of times it comes from people who are dissatisfied with their own situation and they feel the need to justify what they're doing. Hmm. Like maybe somebody who is staying at home, but wants to work, but can't for various reasons. And they're justifying their situation by saying, well, I'm doing what God wants us as mothers or whoever to do. So I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the holy thing, but this person over here isn't. And so I have to make myself feel better by telling this other person that they're not doing what God wants them to do, even though that may or may not be true. Well, it just kind of goes back to that concept of discernment, right? I mean, some people exactly. are called to work, some people are called to stay at home. We have to discern that, and there's no yep. one vocation for everybody. That Exactly. Just... Every, every vocation is unique. You, you don't see the saints. You know, the, there are so many different and varied saints in our Catholic faith, and they didn't all do it all the same way. Some were contemplative, some went out into the world, some were nuns, some were lay people, mm-hmm. you know, some were monks, some were priests, some were soldiers, some were kings and queens, you know, it's the, you know, they, there's not one way to sainthood, and we all have a different and unique vocation, and the key is finding what God is calling us to do, and then doing that wholeheartedly. Right. I'm glad you brought up the saints. You have a chapter in your book about saints. So could you share some of your favorite saints for Catholic working moms? Absolutely. Um, my favorite is definitely St. Gianna Beretta Mola. She's my personal patroness as well as the uh, patroness of the Catholic working mothers group. 
And she was an amazing woman. She was a mother and a doctor. And she balanced those two vocations simultaneously. And according to the biography on her Vatican website, she did it with grace and dignity, which is basically, you know, my life goal is to be the kind of working mom she was. Um, she basically is just the prime example of a woman who, who had this dual vocation. She was called to be both a mother and a doctor. And she didn't, she didn't shy away from that. She didn't think, well, I can only do one or the other. I can't do both. Mm -hmm. She said, I feel God is calling me to do both. So I'm going to do both with his help. And she did. So she's my favorite. There's also um, St. Zeely Martin, who's the mother of St. Therese and Mm -hmm. a few other saints as well. And she ran a lace making business from her home, a very successful one. And uh, there's St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, who was widowed and then converted to Catholicism shortly after being widowed and ended up opening up one of the first Catholic schools in America in order to support herself and her family. Hmm. And uh, the convent she joined, she joined a religious order, even though she was a widowed mother, and they actually made provisions for her so she could continue raising her children as she worked and as she joined the order. So those those are some. There are uh, several more that I talk about, but uh, I th- those would be my top three favorites. And what are some of the other topics that you cover in the book? Um, a lot of the book covers practical things like home management, um, dealing with pregnancy in the workplace, dealing with pregnancy loss in the workplace. Mm. Um, you know, s- difficult circumstances like being a single mom or um, having a child with special needs and that kind of thing. And I also have a chapter about the importance of making time for prayer and self-care and fellowships with other women and with other working moms. And how can the rest of us support working moms, whether it be family or coworkers, things like that? Uh, I think flexibility is really, really key. You know, helping, helping moms um, balance everything by, you know, if you're an employer, by offering flexibility in scheduling and with time off and, with, and that kind of thing. Being willing to, if you're a family member, maybe just being willing to babysit occasionally or being willing to, being, to be a backup if a kid is sick and can't go to daycare. Because I'm telling you, that's one of the toughest things in the world is when your child is sick and they can't go to daycare and your husband's out of time off and you're out of time off and you, you're just at the end of the rope because you don't know what to do. Um, that's a situation a lot of us face, and it is really difficult to get through. So that that would be the, the biggest way I can think of to help. And pray for us, of course. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, there's so much more to talk about, but people have to check out the book. Where should we send them to get a copy? Uh, you can find it at the Arts and Day Visitor online bookstore, and you can also find it on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. All right. Again, it's The Catholic Working Mom's Guide to Life. Thank you so much, Joanna, for sharing it with us today. Thank you for having me.